What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another Q&A from me. It's been a long time since I've done one of these, so if you guys are new to this series, basically how it works is, if you have any question for me, it can be about pretty much anything, it can be about my personal life, Call of Duty, uh, my thoughts on something, uh, any gaming in general, or YouTube, whatever it might be, feel free to ask that in the comment section of this video, and I will do my best to answer it in the next Q&A video. Uh, keep in mind, I won't be answering every single question. I do have to kind of pick through so I can keep these relatively short, even though these are long videos anyways. Uh, keep in mind, yeah, I won't be answering every single one. But if you do have a question, then leave it in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer it in the next Q&A. So let's hop right into it. Uh, first one comes from Thomas McNulty. What is your trick to being such a good player? Well, first of all, first of all, thank you very much for the uh, compliment there. Call me a good player. Uh, basically, the trick... There is no real trick. A lot of it is practice and trying to do whatever you can to improve your understanding and knowledge of the game. I guess one trick, like one thing I can say in general, is it's not enough to just shut off your mind and play the game constantly. Sure, that will help you a little bit. Uh, it will, you will improve over time. It's just going to happen because you are repeating what you're repeating when you play. Basically, it's the same as doing drills. Uh, you, you're practicing. Uh, instead of just doing that though, it's better to practice in an active sort of way. So constantly trying to find ways to improve, different ways to handle the same situation. Uh, what Always constantly thinking, what could I have done better in that situation? If you die, always think about your death and go, uh, was that my fault? And be honest with yourself with that. Was there something you could have done differently to avoid that death? And then the next time you run into that situation, you can try and handle it in that different way. Uh, so that's probably the biggest trick that I can give you to becoming a better player is active practice not just playing a lot and putting the time in you have to actively practice next question comes from simple science 25 swag or swag neither so next up we have one from Sean Jones if you could change three things in Call of Duty Ghosts what would they be uh, this is kind of a difficult one because there are a few more things than three that I would like to change but the first thing that I would change is the time to kill I would make it so it takes longer to kill enemies. Not by too much, like maybe by a bullet or two. So basically I give everyone heavy duty health, which is 30% more health. I feel like then it would still be a Call of Duty, it wouldn't be a Halo or something like that. Uh, but it would reduce camping a lot. And the reason I think a really low time to kill in basically encourages camping is the lower the time to kill, or yeah, when you have a really low time to kill, whoever sees their enemy first will most of the time win that gunfight and because of this people don't want to be seen by enemies so what do they naturally do they hide and they wait for an enemy to walk into their line of sight so they see their enemy first this is just natural this is people have adapted to the game they've adapted to the time to kill and they found that for them if they're not really a super skilled player the most effective strategy is to camp because somebody will walk in their line of sight and they can kill them before their enemy can even react so I feel time to kill is the number one thing I would change. Uh, number two thing I would cha change is the prestige and the unlocking system, both with camos as far as or camos and perks and guns, everything like that, and the way prestiges work. I really don't like how Ghost has it, where you basically just put the time in, unlock points, and then with those points you can unlock whatever you want, whenever you want. Uh, I felt like there was nothing that you were really working towards as you were playing. And the leveling system, it was just something that happened in the background as you played and as you put time in. I loved in previous Call of Duties that I'd have to, like the whole time I'm playing as I'm going through my prestiges is, oh, I can't wait to get to level 32 or whatever it is to unlock this specific perk on my class or this gun or something along those lines. There was always something to work towards and I really enjoyed that with previous Call of Duties and Ghosts completely eliminated that from the picture, and I hated that. Okay, so final thing that I would change, the third thing, would probably be map design. Now, I don't mind the, the ghost maps too much. I'm not complaining about the ghost maps being too complex, but I prefer the more simple maps that, that rely more on gun skill than, than uh, how you maneuver the map and, or how well you can hide in a map. I find the, the maps are just too complex in ghosts, and there's too many different areas that you can be shocked from at any given time when you're looking at uh, at a lot of different maps. And that also discourages people from moving, because why would they go out into the open where it's scary and they can be shot from a ton of di different directions 
when they could just sit in this bush and wait for an enemy to walk right in front of them uh, without the enemy knowing that they're even there. So map design is a big thing that I would also change in Ghosts. But like I said, I'm okay with it. Like I've, I've learned to adapt and I'm actually very, very good at navigating the Ghost maps. I feel that's one of my biggest strengths and it allows me to be very uh, consistently effective at the game. But I'm just not really a fan of them and how they play out. All right, so the next one comes from another Sean, uh, Sean Orr. How tall are you? I'm five foot eleven, so just under six feet tall. Never quite made it to the six feet, and I don't think I ever will. Moving on, this one comes from Hussein Ganem. Uh, did you play Grand Theft Auto V, and did you like it? Uh, yeah, I did play it. I got it right at launch, and I played it for a week straight. Like all my free time, just about went into playing Grand Theft Auto. I ended up beating the the main story in uh, 24 hours of gameplay time in seven days so in seven days i put 24 hours of gameplay time which to me is a lot spent on one game especially considering i kept up with youtube and call of duty and everything like that at the same time so yeah i did play it a lot um next one comes from king of sly kingdom have you ever considered making room in your uploads and connection to do a monthly twitch stream uh no it's simply not possible it's not it's not a matter of making room in my bandwidth because I only have 50, or 60 gigs per month of bandwidth. Uh, it's not not that that's the, limiting me. It's actually my upload speed itself. I have a 0.7 upload speed and therefore like the highest that I could possibly ever stream at I think would be about 360p. But if I were streaming, there's no way I could play online at the same time. I barely have a good enough internet connection to play online as it is. And if I were using all of my upload, upload bandwidth while playing then I, I wouldn't even be able to move my character probably i'd just be frozen i'd be skipping it would be terrible so it's not a matter of how much data i have in the month it's a matter of my internet sim my internet connection simply isn't fast enough to stream with i am hoping to get an office or something i know i've been saying this for a while but i'm really seriously looking for some way to do some live streams uh, to get an office or rent a room or something somewhere with high speed internet Okay, so the next question is, do you ever feel like you're wasting your time playing Call of Duty or making YouTube videos? I know I feel that way sometimes. Uh, personally, no, not at all. Uh, YouTube and Call of Duty is basically one of my big passions. I really enjoy what I'm doing. And for me, I've made it so my passion has potential to go somewhere. So I'm potentially working towards a career or I'm at least, I'm making something off of doing this. So I'm putting in the time and I'm getting something out of it other than just enjoyment. Although I do get a lot of enjoyment out of it as well. I am making a little bit of money at it. Not a ton, but I'm making a little bit of money and there's a lot of potential, a lot of opportunities that it's opening up for me. So no, I never feel that way. Uh, if I wasn't doing YouTube, I definitely wouldn't play Call of Duty too much, I don't think. Not nearly as much as I do. Of course I'd still play it. I've always loved Call of Duty and... Uh, I don't want to say I always will, but I have always loved Call of Duty. And I don't feel as if it's wasting my time even just playing Call of Duty. It's enjoyable, it's something I like to do, and I don't spend my entire life doing it. Next question is, do you consider taking YouTube as a full-time job anytime soon? Actually, yes, I've been looking into this. I've. It really depends on how well my channel does with Advanced Warfare, but I would really like to make YouTube my full-time job job and my number one source of income at this point it's simply not even close to viable like i am making a decent amount of money it's it's not a lot of money by any means it's definitely not enough to live off of but it's starting to come in like so it's it's actual real money now it's not just some spending cash that i can save up for several months and then buy something cool like like a monitor that i'm looking at right now i bought a gaming monitor or my scuff controller or a new microphone or something that's basically what my youtube money was going towards before but now there's a little bit more and it's it's more becoming a uh, part of my source or becoming one source of income for me uh, where I actually use it to pay my bills and do things like that so yes I really do hope that YouTube uh, I will be able to do it full-time I don't know when I don't have any plans in the super immediate future because I simply don't make nearly enough and I do have to still survive and uh, I do need some money for that so I can't do it full-time at this point but I would love to Okay, moving on to the next one from Ben Aspen. How do you have confidence on talking during videos? Uh, this is something that takes a lot of practice. When I first started making videos, it's really strange talking into a microphone or looking at a computer screen while you're talking. 
and there's nobody there. You're just talking to a microphone. There's nobody on the other end of a phone talking back to you. You're just talking. And it is strange. It is something that isn't really natural, and it, it's something that does take time to develop confidence in. I did think about this a little bit, uh, and to give you a tip to sort of improve a little bit, this actually comes from public speaking. Uh, some of my public speaking experience and like my the education behind public speaking, uh, they talk about things called anchors. So I have one right here. I don't use this too often anymore. I don't need to, but this is something that can help you uh, talk a little bit more fluidly and a little bit more confidently by taking your mind off of things a little bit as you're talking. So what this is, it's just a battery. It's just something I had laying around on my desk. I changed the, uh, the batteries in my controller. And so I just happen to have this battery laying around. Now, what do I do while I'm talking? I just sort of twirl this battery around in my hand. Like, you don't need to see it on the screen or anything like that. Like, I'm just, I'm doing it right now. You guys can't tell. And what it does is it kind of gives my mind something else to focus on while I'm talking. And then I don't sort of get caught up in my own head and start stumbling all over my words and things like that. I feel it does help a lot with that. This has been proven to work in public speaking, at least for some people. It, I'm not saying it's going to work for everyone. And it is a little bit weird, it does sound a little strange, but it does work for me. It does help me. If I find I'm really struggling to, to come out with things smoothly, uh, having an anchor around, it can be a pen, it can be a battery, it can be anything you can fit in your hand and just sort of twiddle around a little bit. Anything like that, uh, it can help with your confidence or at least make you appear a little bit more confident with your speaking. So there's a little tip for you. So moving on to the next question, uh, this one's from Dalton Johnson. What is your worst fear for advanced warfare and what would be the worst thing they could put into the game? Or I guess that's not and, that's part of the question. What would be the worst thing? Uh, basically my worst fear for advanced warfare right now is connection and how well the internet connections and hit detection and everything is going to work out with the new XO movements because uh, that's a lot of really fast movement and it can definitely change, well it definitely changes the way you play and because things are moving so quickly, is the internet, like, are the connections going to be able to keep up with that fast movement? Or is it going to make it even more ridiculous where you get so far around a corner and you still end up dying or something like that because you are moving faster? I don't know how it's going to play out. That's my biggest fear right now with Advanced Warfare. I have played the game and I've really enjoyed everything I've seen so far. There's very few complaints. Uh, actually no real major complaints that I can think of it at this point in time as far as things in the game I'm very excited for all of them. I'm sure there's gonna be some things that are a little annoying But really my biggest fear is just connections next one comes from hex orbit. Will you ever play with subs? Uh, I actually play with subs quite often But I usually just play on the Xbox 360 because the Xbox one party system does not work so well for me uh, With my internet connection. It takes me almost a minute to load the page just to send you an invite, like to load your profile page and then to hit that send invite to game. That takes me almost a minute per person to invite somebody to the game. And it's extremely annoying. People lose connection, then I have to go through that whole process again. I find it really frustrating. So I don't play on Xbox One with subscribers at, the, at this point, but I do play on Xbox 360. Uh, actually, the gameplays you're watching right now, I assume these are gonna be the gameplays I put on here, are going to be uh, with subscribers. That's me playing Black Ops 2 with subscribers. So I do play that at least a couple times a week, I try to. Uh, and the way you get into these lobbies is follow me on Twitter, and I tweet out just saying, hey, I'm hopping on Black Ops 2, playing with subscribers. Send me a, me send me a message for an invite, and I will send you an invite. And it's as simple as that. So yeah, make sure you follow me on Twitter. I will leave a link to that down below. The next question comes from James Wickens. Which YouTubers, if any, do you aspire to be like? I honestly, I, I'm aspiring to be my own YouTuber. I'm aspiring to sort of have my own personality come through. I want to be my own separate entity. I don't want to be the guy that's like that guy. Um, I want to be the guy, you know? <laughs> like, I, I don't want to be trying to copy anybody. I don't want to be uh, stealing ideas from people or anything like that. Sure, I might take little bits and pieces from people here and there because I see they're doing something and it's working well for them. So I'm going to maybe try that out a little bit with my videos, but I'm not going to straight up copy anybody. Uh, and as far as like their personality and things like that, I tried to just be my own person and let my own personality come through in my videos. So that's pretty much where I stand on that issue. Okay, it seems like I always start losing my voice when I do all these Q&A episodes just because there's so much talking involved. Uh, so hopefully I can make it through to the end of the video, okay, but my voice might start sounding a little bit bad here. 
Uh, this one here, this next question is, what got you into Call of Duty and what convinced you to do YouTube? I have answered this a long time ago, but I thought I'd just touch on it really quickly because several people asked this in the previous Q&A, so I thought I'd just answer it for you. Uh, what got me into Call of Duty? I don't even know. I've been playing it for a really long time. I used to play it back in like PlayStation 2. I think I played Call of Duty, uh, Call of Duty 2 and every Call of Duty since then in single player and then uh, ended up playing multiplayer when Call of Duty 4 came out. Yeah, so I, I don't really know what got me into playing Call of Duty. It's just something that I've always done. Uh, what convinced me to do YouTube? Uh, basically, I saw an opportunity that... Uh, an opportunity in a field where I feel people weren't covering it very well, and that's like sort of the tips and tricks field. Uh, I felt like I could bring more to the table than the current tips and tricks guys at the time, and I still feel that I can. I feel that I can actually help people improve rather than just making videos uh, that are designed to get lots of views that give you some cheesy little tip that doesn't actually help you improve at the game or doesn't do anything for you. I'm actually trying to make videos to help people improve at the game, and I feel like I've, I've fallen into my niche there, and I really like that. Next question comes from Ben Taberner. How can you be so serious about Call of Duty, but not play competitive? Uh, basically, the number one reason for this is my internet connection. It absolutely sucks. I can't, uh, I can't design my, or I can't revolve my play schedule around other people. I can't play in the evenings with my internet connection, at least the connection is pretty much unplayable after 3 p.m. for me uh, on my internet connection. I live in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing I can do about it aside from moving. I have the best connection I can possibly get here, and it still sucks. But after 3 p.m., I simply can't play. And I don't want to end up on a team uh, playing competitively and having people rely on me when my internet could at any moment just cause my character to freeze for a couple seconds and I could lose the round or lose the game or something like that so that's really prevented me from even giving competitive a shot if I had a really good consistent internet connection maybe I'd give it a try see where things go but again I don't feel like I have uh, the best gun skill out there also so I don't know how well, how well I would do actually playing competitively but I would like to give it a serious shot if I had a good, solid, consistent internet connection. All right, so that last one kind of leads into this one a little bit. Uh, Ace, you are a good Call of Duty player, but do you think you can take on other YouTubers like The Mark of J or Ali A? I feel like I could compete with them, and we're talking if we're on a level playing field as far as connection and everything goes. Now, I know that comes up a lot, but my connection really does suck. And I would hate to blame it on that, but that's just the case. The Mark of J is an incredible player. I have no doubt that he is a better player than me, but I feel like I could compete with him. Like, I'd be somewhat around his level. I'm not saying that I would beat him or I would destroy him or anything like that, but I wouldn't do terrible against the Mark of J. And Allier, he's also a good player. He's a really good player. I feel like I'm on about the same level as Allier, to be honest. Uh, give me a perfect internet connection like they have, and I'm sure I would do just as well as them. Next question comes from Sublime Story. If you play on tactical, what do you have the scuff paddles mapped to? So yes, I do play on tactical and I have my scuff right here, which I did get my sidewinder paddles for, which is awesome. Helps a lot. That was my one complaint with the scuff was it was kind of an awkward position for my finger on the paddle, but the sidewinder paddles definitely fix that. So uh, my left paddle, as I'm looking at it anyways, so my the paddle on the side of the D-pad is jump, and the other paddle is knife, or in Destiny it's slide. And that's basically how it mapped. I just, how I have it mapped. It's just the two paddles. I don't have a four paddle. I don't feel like four paddles is really all that useful, but that's just me personally. Next question comes from Ivory Longshots. Are you playing any more, are you planning any more drills for ghosts or advanced warfare? For ghosts, no. I, I'm not planning on doing any more tip type videos for ghosts. It's basically way beyond its life cycle not many people are interested in looking for tips or anything like that and it just simply wouldn't be worth my time the live commentaries i really enjoy doing still but tips it just wouldn't be worth it for advanced warfare though absolutely i'm going to be doing a ton of drills for advanced warfare more than i did for ghosts i'm planning on having a little bit more structured this time so it's an actual series rather than just a bunch of random videos whenever i i felt like i had mastered a per particular drill so Yes, you can definitely expect some drills for Advanced Warfare. Okay, the next one's a little bit of a long one. Uh, hey Ace, really enjoyed the video. Just planning, or I'm planning on starting a YouTube channel in the next few weeks, and I'm nervous of doing commentaries with people in my house. It just feels really weird recording with my family being able to hear me through my door and stuff. I know it's weird. 
Did you have this problem also? How did you get past that? And any tips for me starting up on my channel? Thanks and keep up the great work. Okay, so yes, I, I can totally relate to that. Even now, it, I still find it a little bit weird when, when I know somebody's within earshot of me recording my videos. It is a little weird, but I just kind of have to push past it. This is something that I do. Everyone knows I do it. Uh, you just have to kind of push through. It is awkward. I know it is awkward, but that's just the way it is. A lot of the time, now I will, like, if my family's home, I'll just say, hey, like, I'm going to be recording. Please don't make a bunch of noise. Try not to stomp around the house or anything too much. And I wait until they're, like, sitting down watching TV or something like that. So then they're focused on the TV, and I can just focus on doing my thing. Even if they can hear me a little bit, they're still focused on the TV. So that's just sort of a little tip with that. You kind of have to push past it. And it's it's nice to just let them know this is what you're doing and uh, ask them to be, to be to be quiet and to just do their own thing and mind their own business, basically. Uh, as far as other tips, I could talk about this forever. Basically, just consistency. Uh, consistency in your personality, who you are, your the type of content that you make, and also consistency in your uploads. Doesn't mean you have to upload a video every single day, but have some sort of a schedule or some sort of an idea maybe one video a week to start with and have it on the same day every week so your subscribers know when to expect your content to be coming out consistency is really important and also create content that people are going to be searching for create content that adds value to the viewers make it so it's something that's worth their while to watch not just something that's entertaining because there's tons of entertaining videos out there it's hard to stand out there. You have to provide some real value to your audience. So make sure you're always asking yourself, what's in it for my audience by watching this video? Next question is a really quick one. Who are you partnered with on YouTube? I'm partnered with Machinima and I'm locked in with them for another year and a little bit. So it kind of sucks, but yeah, I am still locked in with them. I've had a ton of other offers and some really good offers, but I haven't been able to uh, accept those because I'm still under contract with Machinima. Not saying Machinima is a bad company or anything. I've just had better offers out there. All right, so we're just about getting to the end of the questions. This one comes from Thy Rosal. I believe I pronounced that correctly. Have you ever been to the UK? And if so, what did you think? And if not, would you like to? Uh, yes, I've been to the UK a few times now. Uh, basically, in England, I've only been to London. I haven't really been around England too much, but I've been all over Scotland a couple times. And... Uh, been into Northern Ireland a bit as well so yeah I, I enjoyed it it, it wasn't uh, anything too spectacular to be honest I'm sure I'll end up going back a few times in my lifetime uh, it's not something that is super amazing to me but it's cool it's it's a nice uh, change of pace everything's a little bit different everything's really old compared to what we see in Canada here uh, yeah it, it's a, it's okay it's nothing too spectacular for me though next question comes from boom uh, hey man, was wondering what mindset you get into before start before you start playing a match of Call of Duty. Are you always in that kick-ass mindset where you have to, or do you have to get in the zone? Also, if you were to add a new series to your channel, what would it be? Okay, so the mindset going into a game is basically I try to go into a game with no expectations or very little expectations. I don't go into the game thinking I'm going to absolutely destroy this lobby because then if I don't meet those expectations, it's just a downward spiral. I start getting uh, getting after myself like why am I not meeting my expectations I thought I was going to get a swarm this game why am I not getting that swarm and I just start playing worse and worse because I end up fixating on that instead I just like to go into a game with a really relaxed mindset I do my own thing I try to find out how the enemies are playing and I adapt to that I try to adapt and react to how the enemies are playing and this is why my second half when I play Black Ops 2 Domination the second half for me is almost always better and that's just because I've relaxed, I've figured out how, to, how my enemies are playing, and I've sort of gotten into the zone, and I know what to do to challenge these particular enemies. So that's, that's my mindset going into a game of Call of Duty. Uh, if you're going to add a new series, uh, what would it be? Uh, that's going to be a surprise. I have a few new series planned for Advanced Warfare, and that's all going to be a surprise. Moving on to the next one. When you were a kid, did you play sports? Uh, yes, I did. I played hockey for, I believe, like 14 years, something like that. Played a lot of hockey. Yes, I'm Canadian. Of course I played hockey. Not all Canadians actually play hockey, but yeah. Stereotypical Canadian. I played hockey most of my childhood. And then after that, I actually got into competitive paintballing. So I was, I played 
uh, paintball competitively for probably about four or five years and now I just sort of play it every once in a while and I don't really play sports too much anymore which is kind of unfortunate like I still try to remain somewhat active and I'm thinking about maybe joining like a men's league for hockey just like a fun league but not too sure yet we'll see see if I can find some equipment and get into that again so that's going to wrap it up for today's Q&A. If you guys have a question, like I said in the beginning, just leave it in the comment section of this video and nowhere else or else it won't get answered. I will do my best to get to as many questions as possible without making the video like 40-50 minutes long. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will talk to you guys next time.